Michael Horowitz, you're famous among other things for having been Timothy Leary's archivar. That's correct. We're here at the symposium held in the honor of the 100th birthday of Albert Hoffman. Tell me when did you meet Albert Hoffman for the first time? Um, I corresponded with Albert uh, about 1970 and onward because I was collecting books about LSD. Albert was very little known in the United States at that time, but uh, I knew about him and I was a historian and archivist of the drug culture, so I know what his accomplishments were. And I arranged, I knew I was going to come to visit Timothy Leary, in, who was in exile in Switzerland, having escaped from prison two years earlier. Uh, on drug charges for uh, 50 years of drug charges for two marijuana roaches. Uh, Tim successfully escaped, was living in Switzerland in exile, and I, I t Tim invited me over, and um, and I contacted Albert and said, I'm going to be near you. Can can we visit? And he said, Sure. Um, so I actually, when I went to visit Tim, and Tim found out I was going to see Albert, um, I he, Tim asked if he can come along. And I said, of course. So I was present at the first meeting of uh, Timothy Leary and Albert Hoffman. And it was the night after Fasnacht in Basel with Mardi Gras. And they had both been up all night wearing masks and had both participated in Fasnacht. Um, but not n knowing that, of course. And um, Albert picked me up and there was Tim with me. And, and they, so they met, introduced them. I didn't really have to introduce them. Um, I, we drove an Albert's uh, car along the exact route that he uh, rode his bicycle on in 1943 on his first LSD trip. Uh, I was in the back seat with a camera, um, which I just bought, the first movie I ever made. Albert was driving, Tim was in the front seat next to him, and I filmed and recorded them uh, talking and driving along. Uh, we ended up at Albert's house. Uh, Tim was dead tired and took a nap at that point and Albert showed me around his house, including uh, many artifacts. Um, I was, you can hear on the audio that I was asking him all kinds of questions. How did he get the LSD inside him? How did, does he think it happened? And what was he, what was he you doing? You mean his first accidental his first, on the, trip. the accidental one, exactly. Yes. And what, um, uh, what was he trying to do? What, what made him try the LSD 25 again and so mm. on? And that actually made me realize I should interview him and I proposed that to High Times, and four years later, High Times sent me over, and I did a full-scale interview with Albert, which appeared in 1976. You mean you came back to Europe to do this I interview. came back to Europe four years later. And this time, without Tim, Tim was actually on the verge of getting out of prison, because he had been recaptured afterwards. And um, Albert, um, meanwhile, and then he published his problem with Charles a few years later. That interview was the first interview uh, in the United States, and Albert, Asked, before he, he had granted permission to publish it, he wanted to see the magazine, copies of the magazine, and I, I was afraid of that because high, I didn't think he'd approve of High Times magazine, and I was right, he didn't. And the issue I had to show him, and I didn't really want to show it to him, but I had to, was the famous chocolate breast issue, in which a beautiful female breast was having chocolate dripped onto it. I was on the cover. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to have to show this to Albert. And I said, this is the magazine you're going to be in. Fortunately, there was an, an article about the book I, my wife Cynthia and I had done called um, Moksha. It review, was excerpted in that issue. But Albert was not very happy, and he was conflicted. So I, have a Swiss friend, I had a Swiss friend convince him that it would be good for a, a young American uh, readers to, to, to read about his sober, mature uh, ideas about LSD. And he, he granted it, and so the interview was indeed published. And after that, I just uh, visited him every time I came to uh, Basel. And oh, he, we also hosted him, the Ludlow Library hosted Albert in 1978 at the Hallucinogenic Mushroom Conference. We had Albert, Gordon Wasson, um, and Richard Schultes all together uh, in the library in San, Great Library in San Francisco, now the Ludlow Santo Domingo Library in Geneva. All oh, right, I was going to come to that. This Ludlow, yeah. Ludlow, Ludlow Santo Domingo Library yes. is made up of psychedelic literature. Uh, all drugs, but very strong in psychedelic literature. But all sacred plants and hashish and opium, uh, in all languages, in all forms, in all media. Uh, yes, it's, a, it's the world's greatest library. And what do you intend to do this. with it, or the owner of it? Uh, the owner will eventually. Um, it's very. It's a private library. Eventually, it'll be available open for research okay. to scholars okay. and maybe someday it will be a museum 
open to the public, when people can look back on the psychedelic era and wonder why it was suppressed. And so now coming back to Albert Hoffman, what do you think, what role did this man play other than having been the inventor? Do you think that his particular personality makes an impact on how the future of LSD will be handled? Absolutely. Uh, Albert is, um, you know, a dignified uh, Nobel Prize. He should be a Nobel Prize winner, but he has that, that reputation. Uh, and not only did his work with LSD, but also with psilocybin mushrooms and, and the Morning Glory Seeds. Um, and The Road to Eleusis, one of his most important books, proving that the ancient Greeks had took an LSD-like sacrament at their Eleusinian mystery rites for almost 2,000 years in, at, near Athens. Um, Albert is a, is a nature mystic, and, um, and oh, on the, he talks about LSD on the highest level as a transcendent drug of mystical spiritual experience. Uh, so he has put his stamp on it, um, and he has probably helped legitimize it to, for a lot of people who have a negative view because of the, the bad press it's had all these years. Coming back to you, Michael, and what about your own future? What do you envision yourself doing 10 years from now? Well, I want to I write a book, damn it. I've been collecting them and, and selling them and uh, having people autograph them. Albert has autographed, you know, all of the, every time I see him, I uh, bring him a book for that. And um, I've been like kind of a, something of a psychedelic groupie. But I've also done work and helped promote it. And um, I've, um, but I want to write my own, I'm writing my own memoirs oh, about these memoirs. very things we're talking about. I'm going, I'm going to um, another country and write, to write my memoirs. You're going away, you mean? I'm going away from where I live in California to another place where I won't, where I could, to try to write my book about my history ever since I was a hippie in the 60s um, and um, discovering these great, great vistas and great landscapes of the mind. Okay, Michael, thank you very much. You're so welcome, Suzanne. This was the, uh, am I on? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. This was the uh, 50th anniversary of the discovery of LSD that would make it... Um, 16th of April, 1993. No, 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 no. The 50th anniversary was uh, 19... 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Yeah, 93, 93, okay. So this was the first time that Albert set foot in the United States of, of America it was to attend the um, celebration that was put on at the University of Santa Cruz. And I was giving a talk on a, on a prisoner, LSD prison at that time. And uh, so I happened to be there with um, Albert and uh, Anita was there, his wife and friends. And Albert in his Swiss business suit um, stepped through a doorway into a room where, where there was a crowd of hippies in their tie-dye costumes and their long hair and, and with one movement they all bowed to him <laughs> and uh, there was Albert the Swiss because he's a very respectable Swiss chemist and uh, it was um, quite an astonishing uh, contrast to see the respectful devotion, it was a devotion that they were displaying towards him. And it was the first time that, he, he, that I believe it was the first time that he'd ever account, encountered that kind of American, West Coast, Californian, hippie respect for him and his work. That was my memory of him. 